So you can try that. Uh, the only problem with going into TJ Maxx is that you end up buying a whole bunch of crap you don't need. Yeah, a bunch <laughs> of other stuff. Um, but a Facebook market, it's amazing. A lot of people are selling their dumbbells that they used during quarantine or whatever. So definitely check that out. Honestly, I would say that you could have a, a mat, dumbbells, and a way, you know, like a subscription to GHU TV or a way to find workouts online. And that's it. That's like you, you yep. could get totally fit from just that. Absolutely. And also in the summertime when there's nice weather, um, check that out. Stay with us though, because those of you who are on Facebook and Get Healthy UTV website, we have some really fun pictures of home gyms from our Get Healthy UTV members. We'll save that yeah. a little farther down the road. So stay with us here. Okay. Awesome. Um, all right, moving on. How can I reshape my body after 50 years of age? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I've literally lately been thinking a little bit about age. I mean, I don't let age define me, but I'm 54. No, and some days I'm like, oh, I can't believe that I'm this far along. Um, you know, and sometimes I, it, and anyway, it's just, I have these thoughts sometimes. And, but the other flip side is, oh my gosh, I might have 40 more, more years, years to go. Yeah that's a lot of living. Like that means that I'm like halfway through my life. And I mean, that's a whole, that's like going back to when I was 10, you know, and, and going forward. So that being said, you're never too late. You're never too old. The thing is when you get to be over 50, right? They said over 50, you just have to be a little more mindful about your joints, a little more mindful about injury. You can't necessarily just jump into exercise, you know, two feet and, and, uh, feel good the next day. You know, when you were 25, you could try something new and you might be sore, but it was like, eh, whatever. <laughs> but now you have to think, you know, let my joints acclimate, let my body acclimate, get my heart pumping and get my lung capacity up there, do some recovery work. So that's really, you have to kind of come up with that. We do at Get Healthy UTV. We have a fit over 40 calendar. We do. Um, as a matter of fact, one of the things that Sam and I are working on this week is a fit over 60 calendar. Yes. That is just even a little bit more uh, joint friendly focused. So, um, get ready for that. But I think you start with baby steps. Do not, that to me is the difference between age 25 and age 50 is mm -hmm. don't jump head first into something and just go, ah, I'm going to go run a marathon. You know what I mean? <laughs> Give your body a chance to acclimate. Yeah. I love it. Um, we have a lot of questions rolling in. So. Okay. Talk to those people yes. who are watching. Um, we, I'm going to hit some of the ones that are just rolling in to make sure that we get them answered. Okay. Um, we have somebody saying that she's a treadmill um, and a Nordic track. Can you recommend any certain machines for cardio that burns a lot of calories without stressing the joints? She says, I love your videos. I get healthy you TV. Okay. But she wants a piece of machinery. Yeah. She wants a piece of equipment like. well, yep, for cardio. You have a treadmill and a Nordic track. Wow. Yeah. I got to be honest, Nordic track that you, that was a Minnesota based company. I mean, decades ago, <laughs> then they sold, but uh, that Nordic track, that thing is freaking hard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, right. It's the ski thing. Oh my God. That for me is like, Phew. yeah. Um, but treadmills can be very low impact. You just have to get out of the mindset of saying that you have to sprint yes, or, or run fast. Like mm -hmm. use a treadmill to walk. I use a treadmill to watch my favorite shows yeah. or to do intervals. Um, and speaking of again, something else that's happening. That's really exciting. at get healthy. UTV is we are adding tread programming. Yay. It's coming up. It should be available. I might say end of September. I got to see, we're going to film it right at the beginning of September, yep. like literally September 1st. We're getting everything ready, but then we have all of the back end stuff that we have to do, but we're going to have running workouts for you, walking workouts, run, walk. We're going to have walking and running boot camps yep. where you're on and off the treadmill. Um, and so you'll get an opportunity to use those, that cardio piece of equipment. So my favorite would be a treadmill because you yeah. can use it for walking or running for hills, for intervals, whatever. Ellipticals are great. I love ellipticals too, but I feel like I work harder on a treadmill. Same. And I think too, like I've um, actually got my mom to walk at an incline and she's like, that is hard. And so walking at that incline really is like, yep. oh, and you get like the back of your legs. Like there's just so much going on with that. So treadmills are great for treadmills are great. And her mom is my age. I know her mom. So <laughs> she, that's a good piece of equipment. Bikes of course are awesome too. Yep. Bikes are low impact. Low impact Biking yep. is great as you age. So it's another fun cardio piece. Yes. Um, okay. Let's see here. We have, um, I know that you promote clean eating. Do you know anything about South beach diet? And if you do, how do you feel about it? I really don't know that much about South beach diet. I, I want to say it was, uh, Rodale publishing's diet. I'm pretty sure it is now Rodale publishing sold. I used to work for Rodale, um, and prevention magazine for 15 years and I'm almost hundred percent sure Sobe came from them. Mm -hmm. Um, 
I'm not really sure how it works. I do think it's kind of similar to like the Dr. Atkins, like just eat less carbs kind yeah. of a thing. Um, so I couldn't tell you, but eating less bad carbs is the, an amazing way to eat. That's called clean eating. <laughs> you don't need a diet for that. Um, you know, if you can just get rid of processed food, literally, if you can get rid of processed food that has artificial flavors, artificial colors, preservatives, weird chemicals. If it has 50 ingredients on the back of the label, you're probably eating something that's fairly, you know, um, weird. <laughs> if it's shelf stable <laughs> for like 10 years, that's also a food that has a lot of chemicals. Yeah. Just eat more real food, mostly plants, not too much. That's the best diet I know out there. And that still includes like i eat potatoes every day do you eat potatoes you do eat yeah, potatoes sweet potatoes yeah almost every day or yeah i have too. not gone on the kick lately of having them but normally i would say i'm like kind of missing them i so eat white normally. and yeah. sweet potatoes i eat beans i eat you know i, I eat chips and i eat things like Absolutely. that but i eat healthier ones um but i just eat a lot more fruits and veggies and yeah. i think that's important but i don't know i honestly don't know the rules of the sobe diet um, and then just to hit it, Chris, um, because this has been asked a few times. Okay. I'm going to not um, pronounce this correctly, but a lot of people are using the Zang Zangular um, products, I guess, um, and are having great yeah. results. She's been working out, watching calories, but not seeing a lot of results from that and using the products. What are your thoughts on that? So Sam asked me this right before we came on camera. Do you know what Zangular is? I'm like, no, I have no idea. I've never heard of it. We quickly looked it up. It is a weight loss supplement program. Yep. Um, there's supplements you take for weight loss, and I have no idea what they are. I'm pretty sure they don't work. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but here's the thing. Don't rely on what you're taking to lose weight. Rely on your habits. Yeah. A supplement does not make you lose weight. I mean, if it has a little extra green tea in it, great. Green tea is good for you. If it has a little extra caffeine or ginseng to make you feel better, whatever. Great. Those things help you feel better, but they don't make you lose weight. What helps you lose weight is eating healthy, exercising, sleeping, drinking water, um, and doing the habits consistently to make a difference. So I never spend money on supplements. And I would never have one of my clients spend money on a weight loss supplement because no supplement can make you lose weight. Mm. Um, awesome. So that kind of takes care of that. Um, how do you find how to track your macros? How do I, I find like for myself, I'm just, I looking. think for you, but also like how would one, you know, so if she A hormone diet. There are some great hormone diets out there for women in their menopausal years, mm -hmm. um, especially as your estrogen and your progesterone are changing. And there are some things that help like seed cycling, like which seeds, nuts and seeds you eat, like sunflower and pumpkin seeds are good at one part of your cycle. And, um, you know, a little bit of that information, but also know that what helps regulate your hormones is fruits and vegetables and water.
So eat more fruits and vegetables, get away from preservatives, and drink more water. And that's going to help regulate your hormones. Awesome. Okay. Um, for those of you on Facebook, I know we're having some technical uh, difficulties. It sounds like there is a black screen. You can hear us. Um, I see it back on now, so just stay with us. Oh. Um, we're <laughs> Maybe back. a black screen is better than seeing <laughs> <Yeah>. us. <laughs> you can hear us, right? That's all that matters. Um, good. So we're back with that connection if you lost us for a little bit. Um, let's see. We have a member. She is 55 um, plus years old in decent shape, and she loves Get Healthy UTV, Yay. but she would like to get rid of about 15 pounds. What is the best of your workout calendars that you can recommend? She needs a challenge, but she kind of wants something a little bit easier on the joints. At age 55, um, you know, again, it's going to, like, the older we get, the one thing I'm going to say is get away from all the bad food because it affects you so much more. Um, just like I was saying about exercise when you were younger, you know, when you were 25, you could eat a whole, eat a whole pizza at night and then get up the next morning and go, oh, well, yep. you know, but <laughs> it, that doesn't go so well when you're 55. You don't feel good. <laughs> it stays around longer. So really get your eating habits in check. That being said, um, in terms of exercise, if you're just, cause she's just ramping up, right? She's trying to ramp up and lose the weight. Yep. Um, start maybe with some things like the walking workouts because the walking workouts are so good on the joints. Mm -hmm. Um, but you can really put forth a lot of effort. You know, you can walking indoors is like marching, right? So you can go like this or you can pick your feet up and you can really move it. When I'm filming a walking workout, I'm always dripping in sweat. Absolutely. I really, for me, I get a good workout out of it if I put forth my effort. So, you know, check out the walking workouts. Those are easier on the joints. And we do a little less like deep squats and lunges and, uh, and stuff like that. But there's still lower body and core work and upper body mm -hmm. in our walking workouts. Um, I would say, you know, ramp up with those and then get into some of the other low impact stuff. We have um, a lift program, which is low impact functional training. We also in the gold workouts have no jumping strength. We, do. we have a lot of, we have some low impact workouts in gold. We actually have a low impact section. Do we? Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, working on it. We're working, working on, on it. it. We do in the gold, but um, working on it in the premium. There's okay. Just a so few in the videos. gold, you can actually sort by low impact and find those workouts that are lower impact to the joints. But that low impact does not mean low intensity. Right. That's what you have to really remember is that you can keep things low impact, but still pump that intensity up through range of motion, through effort, through getting your arms above your heart, through heavier weights. So it's still really doable. So um, when you talk about a calendar to use that, right? She's talking about yeah, that. The, calendar. Did, the fit over 40. I love that calendar mm -hmm. because it has a few uh, or more low impact. I love walk, sweat, sculpt. Yep. I love serious strength. I mean, that, that does have some jumping, but you can uh, modify it, but it's like seriously good strength for us older gals that need to keep picking those heavy weights up. Um, any others that you can think of? Um, wise? We do have the lift. We do have to go along with. Uh, we the, do have a lift one. Yeah, yeah. So low impact again. Um, and we are coming up with this uh, calendar for over 60. And one of the things that we hear from people who are in their 60s, early 70s, and you guys freaking rock. You rock. That Oops, I lost my Instagram people. There we go. Sorry. Um, but I'm sorry, I lost you there for a minute. <laughs> um, one of the things that we hear from some of the seniors is that getting off the down and up and down and up is really hard on you going from the floor to the, you know, standing from the floor. So we're going to be really conscious about picking some workouts where that's not happening. And eventually we'll film more of those mm -hmm. too. Absolutely. That will be great for you guys. Yeah. Um, along the lines of working out, can you talk about the difference between Tabata and HIT? And the recommended length of those type of workouts. Okay, so Tabata is HIT. Mm -hmm. HIT is the overall umbrella, high intensity interval training. And high intensity interval training means work to rest ratio. And high intensity interval means they're going to be hard mm -hmm. because you can do an easy interval workout. You could go out and walk your dog and go a little faster, a little slower, a little faster, a little slower. That's an interval workout. But high intensity intervals, pushing yourself. Now, Tabata is one protocol within that umbrella. So Tabata is created by a Japanese, I think he was, a God, I don't know if he was a chiropractor or a doctor or what the deal was, um, or a scientist or a, some sort of a trainer, but it was this guy, his name was Tabata, last name Tabata. And it was this concept of 20 seconds hard, 10 seconds of rest, eight cycles in a row. So people would go for four minutes and it, he, he, 
figured all the science out with runners. Mm -hmm. It was started with running. So you'd run for 20 seconds, pull back for 10, run for 20, pull back for 10. You'd do that eight, eight cycles in a row. And he said that was the best way to train your heart um, efficiently and effectively without you know, overtraining and stuff like that. So Tabata intervals became really popular. They still are. Mm -hmm. And we use them with strength training. We use them with cardio. We use them with anything. Um, 20 seconds hard, 10 seconds rest. That being said, eight cycles in a row. That's not the only type of interval. Sometimes I, I teach a HIT class every Thursday. We have a bunch of HIT on Get Healthy UTV. Yeah. And I vary it all the time. Some days I do 30 seconds of work followed by 10 seconds of rest. Sometimes I do 30, 15. Sometimes I do 40, 20. Sometimes I do. But typically your interval, your work ratio is going to be short because you're pushing really hard and then you tailor back. So if you were doing high intensity intervals, you're not gonna have a five minute work period because how can you push yourself so hard for five minutes? It's gonna be a little shorter of an interval. Hopefully that makes sense for you guys. Um, okay, when do you know that you are ready for heavier weights? I've been using five pounds. I feel I can start using heavier, but when I switch to 10, they are very heavy. Um, so she went from five to 10. Yeah. Yeah. So how about try an eight, eight. in there? Yeah. Um, and if you don't have eights, do you have threes maybe where you could hold a five and a three in each hand? It's, it's simply amazing that every little increment makes a difference. Huge you know, you difference. think, oh, what's the difference between five and 10? <laughs> a lot. You know, it's even when you go from 10 pound dumbbells to 12 pound dumbbells, we talk about that all the time. It's a huge, it's a huge difference. It's a like, huge I wish jump. they had some in between there just because. Yeah, like an 11. Yeah. I mean, cause you would think, oh, if I can do 10, I can do 12. And it's a whole different workout. Yeah. My, like when I drop down to tens, I'm like, dip de dip de doo you know, it feels so easy. And when I'm using my 12s, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like dying. So, you know, it's kind of like that. Those little small increments make a big difference. So I'd say go in between there. Yeah. How do you know when it's time to go up in weight? When you can do the, the uh, recommended amount and you don't feel any fatigue. Anything, yeah. If you're like, blah, 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 you're doing your bicep curls and there's zero fatigue, it's time to move up. By the last few reps, you should be like, holy cow, I can barely curl that up again. Mm -hmm. Muscle fatigue is your goal if you are trying to build muscle, get more toned, lose fat. Muscle fatigue is your goal. Um, kind we, have, of we have somebody here who says on Instagram, I love the Lungapalooza calendar. Um, that was a free... Uh, free challenge we have. We also have on Get Healthy UTV, by the way, you guys, we have a bunch of challenges yep. and fun things that you can do. And one thing I quickly want to mention is we have a whole bunch of free 10 minute workouts. Yes. People will ask us sometimes, what well, can I try before I buy? Like, I don't know if I want to sign up as, an, as a member. I just want to see what you guys are all about. We have created a library of free 10 minute workouts that are awesome. Yeah. All of the trainers. So we have now we're up to like, how many local trainers One, do we have? Two, Minneapolis. We're, we're based three, in Minneapolis. Come on. One, two, three, four. I always rely on her for all the smart stuff. Eight or nine, I think. Eight, eight of us, maybe. Maybe even 10. Oh my gosh. Somewhere so we've we got learn. a lot of fun variety in those 10 minute workouts where you guys can, you know, try a yoga workout, try a HIIT workout. They're all 10 minutes. Try a low body or upper body or try a core workout or try a stability ball workout. Here's one. Gee, what was I doing there? Jump lunges, that's for sure. That was a body weight hit. Body weight hit yeah. There's Leah doing her um, stretch. Stretching. She has two like stretch and recovery mm -hmm. um, 10 minutes, which are awesome. She's a dancer, can't you tell? There's Lindsay, our little um, powerhouse. Yeah. Uh, she's got a whole bunch of fun 10 minute workouts. There's Shelly, another powerhouse. Um, so there's, so there's Kate, Kate has so many Pilates workouts. She's like really amazing when it comes to yeah, core and beginner workouts. Um, so try them out. If you guys are interested in seeing what get healthy UTV is about, try out our 10 minute workouts. We'll give you that link to that free page. There's over 60 of them on there. Um, and we do have, we're filming, Sam just got her first 10 minute workouts on there. So there's a couple of Sam's workouts and then Tish and Sheila, our two new trainers, we're filming them coming up. So I just wanted to mention that if, yeah. you know, you're looking for, um, something to, free and something to try. And also for people who are asking where to start, 10 minutes is a great place to start. You don't have to jump into a hour long, you know, workout or 30 minutes, like start with 10 minutes, you will get sweaty yeah, and you'll feel it the next day. Right. And honestly, like if you went for a walk, let's say you walk your dog cause it's nice weather. So you go walk your dog and then you do a 10 minute workout every single day. You will see a difference. You will, especially if you were doing nothing before. It's just amazing to me that people discount 10 minutes when they're actually doing nothing. Yeah. I'm like, well, Hey, give it a try. 
Um, we have somebody saying, I'm able to lift heavy, but slower, especially with squats. For long-term results, is it better to lift lighter and go faster with you or lift heavy and go at a slower pace? And the answer is both. both. <laughs> you need both. So it's important you do both. Um, I often talk about this when I'm, when I'm instructing you guys, is that I talk about sometimes when I load up heavy, I just have to go slower. Part of it is age. I used to be able to go faster, <laughs> um, but I also want to so. do it right. I want to hold really good form so I don't get injured. So I lift and lower slower in a squat when I'm holding 24 pounds. Yeah. When I'm holding no weight and it's just body weight, I can go faster. But when you are lifting heavy and you're going slow, you're training strength. You're training that muscle strength. Like how much can I lift doing a, a, a limited amount of repetitions? Muscle endurance is doing the same thing over and over. Repetitive, repetitive, repetitive motion. So think of in your everyday life, raking the leaves or shoveling the snow or <laughs> that those are Midwestern t terms. <laughs> yeah. Some of you might not have to Some do of that. You don't have to do either one of those things. Um, but that's that repetitive motion. Um, and that's called muscle endurance. And you want to train that too. So I think it's great to do both. Mm -hmm. And I, I know, and I know Sam too, cause we work out together. We do both every week. Yeah. We absolutely. have some days where we're doing fast endurance type stuff and other days where we're slow and heavy. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I, I mean, I, some days I just want to go heavier, um, just to get a little bit more of that, like fatigue feeling, but like some days you just want to get that cardio and move a little bit faster. So yep. without, so they're both really, really good. Yep. We have a couple of people on Instagram saying that they love the lift workouts. Awesome. Yay. Um, okay. We have Ellen asking, do you post any diet plans on get healthy TV? We really don't. Um, so a couple years ago, like at least two years ago, maybe three, we started asking if anybody wanted meal plans, if they wanted, and we got some answers. Yes, yes, yes. So then we started offering them and nobody was using them. Mm -hmm. Um, it gets complicated and I kind of am a preacher of learn how to eat so that you can decide what to eat instead of me telling you what to eat. Yep. Learn how to eat so you're in charge of you. Yep. Because a diet to follow works great, but most people don't stick with it. They don't do it for more than like a month of their life or yep. their year. You know, you're not going to follow a piece of paper for the rest of the year. You got to understand how to eat, then you make wise decisions. So I'm all about teaching you how to eat rather than telling you what to eat. Yeah. And once you understand how carbs work in your body and how protein works in your body and how fats work and why you need a variety and what are the good ones and how to avoid processed food, then you start to say, hmm, what am I going to have for breakfast? I'm going to have, you know, a protein shake or oatmeal or eggs or whatever works in your lifestyle and your personal likes too. So yeah, we don't really do that. We have had some Q and A's about um, nutrition, nutrition and meal prep. So yep. you can go back and watch some of those. Um, and in our Facebook group, our private Facebook group, a lot of women share a lot of nutritional information in yeah. there. Yep. Um, okay. Let's see. We have Cheryl and she says that she has a fibro fibromyalgia and arthritis. She is also yep. dealing with Morton's neuroma in her left foot. What are the best workouts for these type of issues? So she has fibromyalgia yep. and Morton's neuroma. Yes. Okay. So fibromyalgia and, arthritis. and what? Arthritis. Okay. And fi fibromyalgia, you get a lot of pain. I, you know, obviously you have to talk to your doctor because I don't know if there are certain limitations based on your situation of overdoing it because inflammation is a big part of uh, both arthritis and fibromyalgia. And so definitely talk to your do doctor. It, osteoarthritis and basic arthritis actually feel better with movement because you get that synovial fluid moving in the joint and mobility of the joints helps to relieve some of that pain. And so light and, and maybe lower impact exercise is really good with um, arthritis. I would say you probably want to stay low impact, right? Because uh, probably any kind of pounding is going to be very difficult. So definitely yeah. stay low impact, but that doesn't mean low intensity as we already discussed. Mm -hmm. Morton's neuroma in your foot. I thought I had one actually at one point. <laughs> it's like a weird nerve thing between like your second and third or your third and your fourth toe. And it's like, a, um, an, I don't know how to describe it, but it's some sort, I'm, I'm no doctor, but it's like some sort of nerve thing that causes nerve pain. And um, you need to go to an orthopedic or a podiatrist or some sort of a doctor that can look and see the degree of it. There is surgery for Morton's neuroma, but there also is are things you can do with like padding in your shoes yeah. or 
inserts between your toes, sometimes like a toe spacer. Um, I don't have all the information on that. For me, myself, like I started noticing some weird nerve pain in my right foot between my second and third toe, and I just massage it all the time. Like I use this, mas the what do we, our Theragun on it. And I started putting better inserts in my shoes and not walking around barefoot, and that helped a little bit for me. But definitely if it's been like a long time and you're getting a lot of nerve pain, um, contact your doctor. And then as far as exercises on Get Healthy UTV, you could try out, if you can't put any pressure, chair workouts. Chair workouts are good. Are great. Um, we've had great feedback on those as far as like you are still getting your heart rate up. We were sweating so much by the end of those. <laughs> hip flexors were on fire the next day. So yeah, you actually those chair workouts are really intense on hip yeah. flexors. Like you can <laughs> skip the hip flexor part. You don't have to keep lifting your legs yep. because, oh my gosh, like seriously. <laughs> Sam and I filmed those and we're like, these are no joke. No joke. Yep. So and there's other ones out there too. So those are great ones to do for as far as exercising if you really can't put any pressure on that foot. Um, we've had quite a few questions come in, so let's hit this one, Chris. Can you recommend best protein powder? And let's talk about collagen. Okay. Yep. So <laughs> protein powder and collagen. Um, so protein powder. Uh, you guys know at Get Healthy UTV and myself personally, we are huge fans of BiPro protein powder. Um, I have been taking BiPro for over a decade. Mm -hmm. So it's been a long time. Um, they're a, they were a family run business out of Minneapolis and I knew the family and they sold to, I forget the name of the, oh, it's a big food company, but they've still kept their little office of people. They're still that same kind of family backed program. It's all clean way. Um, without additives and weird stuff in it. That's why I like it. I think a lot of protein powders give you weird stomach issues, Absolutely. whether it's gas or like gurgling oh, yeah. or bloating or whatever. So just clean whey protein is my favorite. And um, I use their elite uh, protein. We talk about it a lot. We're, we're going to be doing some more talking about it on Facebook because yep. we have a partnership with them. Um, whey protein is the most readily used by muscles because it has high in leucine, which is one of the amino acids, which is responsible for muscle um, synthesis. So that's why I really like the BiPro brand and I like whey protein. But if you do not, if you're a vegetarian or a, a vegan, um, some vegetarians will use a whey based program uh, product, but if you're vegan and you want a plant based protein, there's so many good ones out mm -hmm. there. Um, I just recently tried the four sigmatic protein. Yes. Um, I liked it. I, on a, it's probably on a scale of one to 10, I'd give it like a six or a seven. Cause it does have that planty taste, taste to, to it, it, but yep. I like it. Um, I like pumpkin seed protein. You mm. can buy it on Amazon. Like it's literally ground pumpkin seeds. Yes. There's a lot of healthy fat in it though and magnesium. So don't be totally afraid of the fat, but it is so creamy. Oh. It is ridiculously creamy. So, um, that's a good one. Collagen is awesome. I take collagen every day. Um, I started like six, eight years ago when I started having really weird skin issues and I was kind of freaked out and I read about it online. Um, collagen is great for hair, skin, and nails. It's a completely different protein profile than whey protein. Mm -hmm. So there's um, nine essential amino acids and 11 non-essential. Um, so I think there's 20 amino acids. Nine of them need to be taken in through food. 11 of them are made in your body. Um, but the profiles are different. So like whey protein has, like I mentioned, leucine and some of those, the uh, BCAAs that are good for muscle synthesis. Whereas collagen is made of a different amino acid profile that really helps with hair, skin, and nails. It's not necessarily geared towards muscles. So you can take both. Yep. I guess that's what I was getting to is that like some people put a scoop of whey and a scoop of collagen in yeah, there. Yeah. I use the whey in my protein shake. And then I typically take the collagen pills at night because I keep them on my bedside in my, or in my bathroom. And I just remember to do it at night. So I don't forget, but I do have a whole thing of the powder too. And I sometimes use it. Do yeah. you use it or no? I do. Yep. Do. Every day. And I actually take up pill in the morning. You do. It's just okay. easy for me to remember. Okay. Um, uh, along the lines of Bipro, we have somebody asking if they have non-way, she prefers plant-based. So does Bipro specifically have? Uh, Bipro is all way. So they are not a plant-based, but like I said, I just mentioned the four sigmatic, which is like mushroom based. Um, I know that sounds gross, but it doesn't taste like mushrooms. Um, the, uh, a lot of people like the Vega or the Vega. I'm Vega not sure one. how you yep. spell or how you say it, but that is a very popular brand. I've heard a lot of people talk about. Yep. I like, like I said, pumpkin seed protein powder. My daughter, it was a vegan for years now, a vegetarian. And so she and I tasted a whole bunch of plant-based proteins way back when. 
to figure out what was the best. And we loved that one. That one. Um, we have Michelle asking, uh, she loves cardio and getting a good calorie burn several times a week. Why is it so hard to slow down and do a yoga class? What are the benefits? Well, you must be a type A or a high energy person <laughs> because a lot of us get addicted to that cardio high, myself included. Yeah. And my cardio high is probably different than Sam's cardio high. She can push herself way more than I can push myself at my age. But what I, but for me, pushing me, like it, that's my world. I feel good. I love that cardio rush. Mm -hmm. I just love it. The endorphins that release. But the thing about recovery, especially as you get older, is that you realize like your muscles get sore. They get tight. You worry about injury. Um, it's no fun to live in pain. You know, I always joke that like 25 years ago, the pa word pain never came out of my mouth. And now I'm always now like, oh, my back hurts, yep. my foot hurts, <laughs> my knee hurts. So, you know, it's managing um, your body's ability to keep moving. And so recovery workouts are so important. And yoga is just good for the mind. Honestly, yeah. I'm like as high energy as they get. And that deep breathing is so fabulous. Um, and every time I take a yoga class or teach one. Um, I really got into teaching yoga years ago. I got certified uh, 10, 15 years ago and just keep going. I'm not currently teaching one weekly. And when I do, I just subbed one last week and I was like, oh, why am I not making myself do this more yeah. often? Because the way I feel afterwards is so redeeming. I don't even turn on my watch during yoga because no, I'm like, know. I don't want to look and go, Oh, I burned a hundred calories. Cause that doesn't, that's not why I'm doing no. it. So just enjoy it for what it is. And it is important, especially as we age. Yeah. I, the benefits are crazy as far as the men mental state goes, but I know actually you'll be proud of me. Like a week ago, my yeah. body was so sore and I did, I just did a yoga workout and you did, I did because I couldn't, I was I'm like, so I don't know if I could do high impact right now. I just like couldn't do it. And so I, it got me thinking like, why don't I do this more? Right. And every time I do it, I say that same thing. So it's I like, love that you say that. I love that she admits that I she do. needs it too. Cause she is like a go hard, <laughs> go big or go home kind of well, a gal. And because so it's good. used to being a dancer, like I used to love stretching every day and I don't do it as much anymore. And I'm noticing like, Oh, hamstrings are a little bit tighter than they used to be. So, and, and by the way, if you do stretch, like if you are a stretcher, but you're wondering about like the deep breathing and that part of yoga, mm -hmm. we have free meditations on yes. Get Healthy UTV. So we have a whole bunch of between five to 10 minute meditations that are all done by my daughter. She's way more Zen than me. <laughs> and um, they're all, she's a meditation teacher and a Reiki instructor. And they're all about deep breathing and just helping you like relieve stress or anger or emotions. And so check those out too. They're all free. They're in the 10 minute workouts. You can find them there. Um, we have somebody asking, Chris, is it true that running will not help with weight loss and shedding fat? You should do HIIT workouts instead to see those results instead of steady state cardio. Both work. Yep. It's just about energy in, energy out. The thing about HIIT is that you get more done in a shorter period of time. Mm -hmm. And so what you're doing is you're taking your heart rate and you're pushing it and you're pushing it and you're pushing it and you're testing it. So you're strengthening that heart muscle and pretty soon your cardio area gets bigger. For beginners, a lot of times their cardio area where they feel good, that comfortable cardio is small. And so by doing HIIT, it's like you keep testing that heart muscle. Pretty soon that area gets bigger. Now you have a bigger area to live in. And so then when you go out for a run, you're like, oh, I feel better than I ever have because before you weren't quite as fit. Um, but it's about how many calories you burn. You tend to burn a lot of calories with it. That's why people like mm -hmm. it because you can get more done in a shorter period of time. But I mean, both Sam and I will tell you that we're fans of both. Yeah. Like I need my one steady state cardio a week. I just love that, that adrenaline or that endorphin, endorphin rush. Run, yeah. But I also love HIT. So I think one of the biggest messages we're giving you guys today is variety is key. Mm -hmm. Two things I'm going to tell you about fitness to be successful. Consistency and variety, period. Change things up. Don't keep it boring. You'll literally start to get so sick of it. Maybe in a week, maybe in a month, maybe in a year, but you will get bored with yourself and so will your body. And number two, consistency. It's not what you did once. It's not because you ran a 10K once. It's because <laughs> You take care of your body every single day, and that makes a difference. Um, something else I wanted to mention was that we we were uh, back with those home gyms. Yeah. I just wanted to quickly mention that a lot of our members, and we should probably just quickly share some of these photos. Um, we asked in our private Facebook group, if you are a Get Healthy You TV member, we asked you guys to take a picture of where you work out in your home. Because before we show them, I just want to quickly talk about this. It's a total trend. 
and even since the pandemic, yep. but it's a total trend to work out in your home wherever you want. Like you don't back 10, 15 years ago, everyone wanted a workout room yeah. in their house. Like, Oh, I have to have a workout room. No, now people don't. People literally make a workout space out of their family room, their living room, their bedroom, their garage, their office. Um, you kind of stick the equipment there. And one of the biggest things that we're finding is people are exercising near their big screen TV. Absolutely. So you don't have to have dedicated space. So anyway, we asked people to send us a picture. It was kind of fun. So I don't know if our tech people can pull it up, but we have a couple of pictures of where people are working out to inspire you. So check this out. This is Cynthia's home gym. So look at that. Like, I love it. She just has her computer, her big screen TV. She can put it away if she wants to. Let's see who's next. Do we have, this is Maria's. Yep. Um, look, wow. Nice variety of uh, equipment along with everything else. And she's got some toys there, maybe kids. Um, <laughs> Judy's home gym is coming next. Love this. Again, look at this. This is the family room. They just pull their weights out, their mat out right there. She's got her calendar right there. I love it. Um, let's see. April's home gym. Okay. I'm in love. Love this picture I with am, the dog. Obviously both Sam and I have a golden retriever. We're obsessed. Yeah. So, okay. It, whose gym was this? April's? This April's yeah. April, we love your dog and we like your weights too. <laughs> Um, let's see, Sean, um, look at this near a window. Yes, because daylight matters yes. when you're working out. It feels, um, good. Let's look at the next one. We got Anita. Everyone just kind of piles their stuff to the side. I love that. She's got a bike. So that's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, uh, Anya and Molly. These are part of our <laughs> GHU TV, um, staff actually look at Molly there. Okay. How cool is that? They put words on I the back of the wall. love the motivated the wall. words in the back. Um, and then they've got a big screen TV there, all their weights. You guys rock. Uh, let's see the next one. We've got Mary. I can't, okay, by a window. Look, look, look at, at that. the trend, though. It is your living space. It's yes. not a specific room. Right. You guys, you have such cute home gyms and great equipment. All right, let's see. We've got Liz's home gym. Um, right in the wine cellar. <laughs> Perfect. For, the first time I saw this, I thought it was a bunch of weights. I was like, that is impressive. <laughs> okay. You tell, okay. I'm going to give Liz the number one award for, she's got her workout. Then she takes a sauna, sweats it all out and then pops open a bottle of wine and relaxes. <laughs> I'm coming to your house. And do we have one more? Yeah, we have one more. Um, yeah, this is, I guess another, another Liz. Liz. Yeah. I hope we got the names right. If we didn't, you guys were sorry. Um, look at this again, just in their living space. Yeah. So I hope this motivates you to say, um, and those of you on Instagram, sorry, you couldn't see that, but you can <laughs> see it if you go back on Facebook. Um, this just, I hope this motivates you to say, you don't need much, like no more excuses. If there was no. one thing that the pandemic taught us is that habits need to change yeah. and people started going, oh my gosh, my gym is closed and what am I going to do? And people start working out at home and then they start realizing, you know what? I don't need the fanciest equipment. I need a set of dumbbells. I need a TV or my computer and I need some, somebody to motivate me. Absolutely. And I, it's time saving too. I love this. We have Mary saying she has sliders under the couch. So she easily slides them out and then slides them right back underneath. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. That's fantastic. Thanks you guys for sharing your home gyms with us. I, I, I love that. Uh, and we do see a lot of pictures in our Facebook group often, and they typically do have a pet or a kid in, in them. them. <laughs> it's the best. And it just is a mood, you know, booster too. Um, I also want to give a little shout out to Marsha. She said she did Pilates thinking that it was going to be a waste of time. And she goes, holy bananas. I was so sore the next day. So yeah. same thing as like a yoga Pilates, like it's lower, like where you're not getting that heart rate necessarily as high as you're, you're used to, but it will literally leave you sore the next My day. My Pilates certification was the hardest certification I got. Oh, absolutely. The hardest one. I literally had to study. Like, like it wasn't just <laughs> learn how to motivate people. Like I had to literally study the anatomy of the body. Yeah. It was intense. And I'll tell you, when you are really doing Pilates, holy mother, you feel your abs. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, we have Mary asking, what do you think about tonal or mirror with the new technology? You know, that mirror that it's like, um, that what do I think of that program? Yeah. Um, I don't, I, I haven't tried it. I don't know. Um, but it's so, like, obviously would be like a competitor to get healthy UTV. You're getting your workout through a mirror. Yeah. I don't know how it works though. I mean, do you have to have their mirror? Yes, I think so. So like you have to a, buy their mirror. Yep. So again, whatever floats your boat, you know, my goal is to motivate you. So I think when you're looking for a workout program, you need to find out, do you like the trainers? Do you like Absolutely. the motivation? Do you like the way the, the uh, product is delivered? Um, is it nice quality? Yeah. Um, are you able to move around in your home or when you're traveling? If you ever do that again in 
our lifetime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that would be my advice. Um, let's see here. What is the best way to shift fat from the middle section? So she says, I don't eat processed foods and I work out about six times a week, six times a week, um, with a mix of Pilates weight and Zumba. But how do you get rid of that tough middle section? Oh, and it depends on age. Um, if you are in the menopausal years, the hormones are changing. And so more than ever, she said she eats healthy, yeah. but like really, really, really make sure you're eating healthy. Like put that down on paper, yeah. look and see, are you, you know, having anything that might cause tons of inflammation and or water weight, that kind of thing. And then amp up your workouts just a little bit. Anytime, you know, you keep doing the same thing over and over and getting, um, the same results, yep. you know, then that's time to change. I think who was it that said the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over mm -hmm. and expecting something to change. It's not going to change unless you change. I don't know. Was that Einstein or <laughs> was that, I feel I like I should know Einstein. this because you used to tell me this all the time. <laughs> but, so change it up, change up your workouts. Maybe you need to go a little harder. Maybe you need to try something that's just a little more intense, burn up a few more extra calories mm -hmm. or, um, change out the weights that you're using or whatever it might be. But it sounds like it's time for a change to shake it up. Yeah. Okay. Um, this one's a long one, long one. So stay with me. Um, she's 32 and has been a 5 a.m. exerciser for over 15 years, mainly cardio. She su subscribed to Get Healthy UTV to start working on strength and muscle endurance. She says, when I do push-ups, even modified, in order to have full range of motion um, to do a push-up, I literally collapse to the floor. Is it important to have full range of motion and do fewer or do more and use half range of motion and not collapse? But she says she loves Get Healthy UTV. Okay, that's awesome. That's a great question because this is something I talk about a lot, push-ups. Yes. So push-ups are hard. They are so hard and they require a lot of strength. So if you've never been a push-up person and now all of a sudden at age 52, you're trying push-ups, it is going to be a challenge and it's going to take more than a week to get strong enough. So my recommendation is to go on your knees or get your butt in the air. It doesn't matter. Those are going to release the amount of body weight you're putting into the push-up. So I, I can see myself right here. I'm just, and I'm attached to a microphone, but I'm just going <laughs> to move my chair right here. So if you're on your toes and you're doing this, look at my arms. That's not a push-up, right? The push-up is all about the pectorals. Yeah. Hold the table. Okay, Sam. You. <laughs> <laughs> if you're doing this, that's not a push-up. Okay. You got to come all the way down and all the way up. So I feel those pectoral muscles working. So if that means go to your knees, if that means get your butt in the air so it's less weight, if that means doing it into a table, work out a progression, work out a system where it's a progression and you get stronger, but you got to get that full range of motion in that push-up. So that's a really good question. I would say go for the range of motion, less body weight, more range of motion, get stronger. The other thing that people do wrong in a push-up is this. So the minute you get your elbows out to the sides, look at my neck. So the minute I start doing this, all of a sudden, I'm scrunching my neck. I'm using my trapezius muscles. I'm getting a neck cramp. So you really need to keep your elbows back and trust your triceps. And for a lot of women, if you haven't been lifting weights, your triceps are super weak. So between your chest and your triceps, you collapse to the floor because it's like, I, I can't do that. Yeah. So just give yourself grace and work on a progression. Chart it. Like chart yourself. See, like, did you start against the wall and then you move to a table and then yeah. you move down to a chair and then you move down to a step and then you move down to the floor? Did you start on your knees and your butt in the air and then start flattening out your back? Yeah. And then, you know, just go for progression. Progress, not perfection. So keep working on it. I love it. Um, we, this is a great question as far as kind of like what we started out our topic with today. She wants to work out at home and has been, but um, during quarantine, it feels like she's never leaving her house. How do you make <laughs> exercising exciting and new again with staying at home? Oh, I know that's what I was saying earlier is that like working out at home has always been a part of my life um, between the gym and working at home. I, I mix it up, yeah. but I've always been able to go places, right? I mean, like all of a sudden you're in your four walls, yeah. you know, doing the same thing every day and life just becomes uber mundane. So for sure, following a calendar, like doing different workouts every day, mm -hmm. people get kind of stuck in their rut where they're like, and I hear this from some of our members where I keep repeating the same workout because I like it. We have over 250 workouts. Like go crazy and try something go different because it will make you feel excited. Yeah. Get outside, walk, run, 
um, walk, run, mm -hmm. um, go out in your lawn and take your, you know, we've seen a lot of people who take their laptop outside on their porch and they're out on their deck yeah. or their porch and they're doing their get healthy UTV workout. Um, the month of March when I was in Arizona, yes. Um, and I had my kids with me and my niece was with me. We would take my laptop outside in the beautiful pool at the pool deck and we would turn on a get healthy UTV workout and we would do it outside. And that just felt good to yeah. be outside. Yep. So change up the workouts, change up the routine, get outside whenever you can. Um, and hopefully, you know, eventually I think it's going to be a while, but life will go back a little bit to normal. Absolutely. Um, we have somebody asking if we have any plans for beginner yoga programs, like beginner, beginner. Oh, I'd like to know more about that. Um, who asked that? Um, someone on YouTube. Someone on YouTube. <laughs> um, send us an email. Uh, you can go to Get Healthy UTV and click on Contact Us, and then you get a little area where you can write. I'd love to um, know what you're looking for. Like when you say beginner, what do you mean by beginner? Because typically in yoga, It'll start with like, you know, getting you through a down dog flow and then give you some, uh, some, she's saying teaching individual moves and flows. Interesting. Okay. Well, here's one thing I would say is, I don't know if you've tried Sheila's, uh, yoga yet. Um, Sheila was new to us back in, was it January, February? Yeah. January. January year, yep. Yeah. So she started with us in the beginning of 2020. Um, I met Sheila 15 years ago at Pilates training and I, she's adorable and she's we just cute. couldn't get her on our schedule cause she was teaching on Mondays yep. and finally we got her to come with the lives. So she teaches slow flow and Hatha yeah. and both you and I have, have done, done it both of them. Yep. and I feel that's a little more beginner, right? Cause I yeah. feel like Sheila really kind of, she um, really goes through like each pose movement, very. Yeah. So try those out. Yeah. If you are a get healthy UTV member, try out Sheila's slow flow. And th these are gold workouts too. So let us know that, but uh, slow flow and Hatha. Yep. And tell us if that meets your needs. The other thing I would say is now I'm thinking about this. Uh, we do have a program called yoga flowetry mm -hmm. and that is uh, a friend of mine, Jennifer Gillardi. She's out of LA. Um, I love the whole yoga flowetry workout at 60 minutes. So it's yes, our longest it's long, um, yeah. yoga workout, but they're also in that program is a tutorial. It's a 15 to 20 minute tutorial on how to do some of the poses and that I always give that link to people when they're saying, I'm not quite sure if I'm doing down dog correct or whatever. I give people that link. So do check that out too. And then let us know if that meets your needs. Um, okay. I don't even know about this, so I hope you do. Um, <laughs> uh -oh. we have somebody asking, I recently noticed on my activity watch for the Apple watch, there is a trend for VO two max. Did you know about that? On the Apple watch, yeah. there's a trend. Yeah. What do you mean a trend? I don't know. Okay. I just yeah. copied the, <laughs> I'm going to be honest, copied the question. Okay. Um, she said, I don't know much about this measure. Curious what you think is a good number to have for this. If you are willing to share what your number is. Where do you find this VO2 Somebody max? Somebody have to tell us about this because I don't know about it um, So your VO2 max, your VO2 is like your oxygen consumption. And like, for instance, at certain health clubs, they can measure your oxygen consumption. You yep. put on that oxygen mask thing and they measure your VO2 and kind of tell you where um, your, your, your whole um, uh, range is. Yep. But I'm just looking on my watch to see if I can find, is it in the heart? Is it in the heart thing? I've never seen it on the workout part. Have you, no, Sam? I have not. Um, there is a cardio and I know that there's thing, like, but yeah, there's the a heart. I'm looking cardio. for the heart. There's the heart. Do you have the heart on you? Yep, here heart. it is. Okay. Here's the heart. So here's my resting heart rate, but I don't see anything about VO2 max on here. All right. We need more info. Uh, let us know where you're finding this VO2 <laughs> max. But uh, what would you say? I mean, what would you say if somebody was looking for their max heart rate? How do they find that? Because everyone's is different. Everyone's Yours is, different. is different than mine. You can't um, compare yourself to others because you will literally go insane. Everyone's heart is different and it's based on fitness uh, level, mostly genetics, a lot of genetics and some age related things and medications. So as people get older, a lot of people are taking different medications, whether it's for um, any kind of an ailment or heart issues or um, cholesterol or any of those kinds of things. And that can also change your um, VO2 max. But typically the best way to find it out, we do have a blog that we could send to you that kind of talks about heart rate. 
but and and how to figure out your zones. But the best way is when you get that Apple Watch is to pay attention. So you're working hard. And when you're really pushing yourself to your absolute max, look down and what is that heart rate? And do that for a week, two weeks, three weeks, and start to know where your max heart rate is. That's kind of how you find out. Like, I know that when I am pushing myself to no end, let me see that. Okay, thanks. I don't think mine's um, accurate, but. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then you would know that that's your top heart rate, right? And then, you know, when you're kind of dogging it where your low heart rate is, and that's how you make your zones. But for instance, um, to my classes, there are a couple girls who come to my live classes who their heart rate is always at 200. Like that's absurd to me. <laughs> I mean, if I got my heart rate to 200, which I don't even know if I possibly could, you would definitely have to call the paramedics. Yeah. They're both tiny, tiny people. Their heart must beat really fast. They have a different size heart. It's their genetics. And they said, well, I've always had that high of a heart rate. Yeah. So again, if you've checked it with your doctor and that's, so own your own zones when it comes to heart rate. When it comes to your cardio fitness and your VO2 max, I, I don't know where you're finding it. I do see it in trends that's now. What where did you find is. this? Um, so it's in your um, activity app on your phone. So the three. Oh, you got to go to your phone. Yeah. So you are way more um, well, into it than we are, huh? We yeah. didn't even do so it. So this one, and then you click on trends. But like, okay. So your VO2 max, part of it, it's about pushing yourself, right? And, and cardio fitness is predicting it off your watch. But part of the problem too mm, is if you turn your, you know, uh, workout app off Later. when you finish your workout. Oh, yeah, which, you know, but I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. So sorry, that was a really long winded answer. <laughs> we did talk about heart rates at least, yeah. but I'm going to look into this VO2 max. Me too. I mean, most of the time, um, I have heard about people getting it tested at the gym using, the, uh, um, the mask, the mask. The mask. Yep. Um, and it's really important for athletes, you yes. know, for us everyday athletes, it's like that doesn't necessarily totally affect you. But if you're a runner, you're trying to win a race, you're trying to get out there and improve your, uh, you know, triathlon speed or something. VO2 max is very important. And that's something you would want to know about. But for us everyday people, obviously, we pay a little less attention to that. <laughs> Um, we are just like four minutes away. So we do, Chris, have somebody asking, are you going to add some longer walking videos, like three to four miles to get healthy? Aha, uh -huh. good question. Um, we, that's going to be part of our tread program. Yeah. So, you know, our indoor walking workouts are, uh, you know, aerobic based where we're marching and then we might do a sidestep and fun stuff. Like, I mean, I love the rock walking workouts, but we're adding these tread programs. We're going to have 30 minute walks on there. Yep. So. Now, so if again, you don't have a tread, you could kind of take it. You could just, definitely take it outside yep. and just listen. Um, but typically in 30 minutes, you're going to get like two miles, right? Or a yep. little more than two miles. Yep. So you could do two of them. We're going to have three different walking workouts, yep. right? So you'll be able to, like, you could thread together two of them. That would be an hour of walking. You'd get four miles. So that's coming. Hold tight. Coming. Um, how important is hydration to your health and how much like water or hydration should you be getting each day? Water is such a big part of your health. It's the easiest health tip that anyone can give you. It's free if you're willing to drink no tap water, which literally, like I have for a decade made a game with myself not to buy water. Cause yeah. I'm like, why buy water when we have water? Um, now some cities have horrible city water and then you do buy tap or, I mean, you do buy bottled or you do get a filter. Like we have a filtration system yes. at home. Um, and then when I travel, I'll buy one bottle of water and then I just keep refilling Filling it wherever it. Yep. I'm at. Cause I'm like, nobody in New York seems to be dying. So I guess I can buy their new, <laughs> drink their water <laughs> wherever I'm at. Unless it tastes like there are a couple places I've been like some places in Florida, the water is horrible. Um, but anyway, that being said, um, hydration, your body is 70% water somewhere around there. Like hydration is absolutely key when you are low hydro, you know, when you're, when you're dehydrated, systems shut down, your body doesn't work quite, quite right, you can't sleep, you're inflamed. Like water is the flusher of, it's the best detox out there. Um, so drink as much as you can. The old eight glasses of eight ounces, that 64 ounces in a day is a pretty decent kind of go-to rule to follow. Yeah. Um, there's no total science behind that, quite honestly. Like <laughs> If you look it up, nobody said, oh my God, we did all these studies with people's bodies and this is the perfect amount. That's just like a good number to go for. I was just joking the other day about somebody I saw who said they're doing 128 ounces a day. Holy moly, that's, that's a, a lot. lot. Yeah. I average about 64. What do you? Um, I would say somewhere between 64 and like 90. Yeah, she's a major I one. I do. I gotta do a better job. I gotta do more. I mean, like today I've already drank three of these. 
What? I like guzzled water after that workout today. I don't know. Sam, and I oh my gosh, right this away. is so my second. Get going. Um, <laughs> I'm almost done with my second though. I'll fill it up a third time. So it's very important to your health. Look it up. Like it is the easiest health tip I can give you. Hydration is key for every system in your body. Yeah. Um, and it's very high, hard, hard, hard to overhydrate. Yeah. Um, you will hear about that like in marathon runners sometimes when they're drinking gallons and gallons and gallons of water. But here's the other thing that's happening to those people. They're also depleting themselves of their electrolytes. Yep. So they get in this weird, I forget what it's called when you're overhydrated. It's, there's a word for it, but it's very rare that that would happen to any of us, yeah. Yeah. normal people who exercise normally. I'm putting my foot normal, in my mouth. Normal. normal. I'm not normal. So don't go with what I say. <laughs> well, um, it is two o'clock. Now I'm drinking my water. Yeah, I'm totally trying to go. Mm -hmm. Um, it's two o'clock. And so we are kind of out of time for questions. Um, so um, I bet that, um, Instagram is going to just hang up on us because that's what happens after an hour. So if I miss you on Instagram, thanks for joining us, everybody. If you want to watch this replay, if you do, um, <laughs> on get healthy, right. Or Facebook. Um, the Get Healthy You page, the Chris Fred to Get Healthy You page. Um, we'd love for you to check it out. We come live every month. Yeah. Try to cover different topics um, every month. We we we've hit so many different topics. Yeah. Yeah. We, and we try to have a little theme, but we will answer any any on questions. The fly. Yeah. We have some of the other trainers join us from time to time. It's been a little hard since the pandemic started, um, but now as things are easing up, we'll maybe get a third trainer in here one of these days in the next few months to come. Everybody hang in there. Take care of yourself and your family. And we too can do this, you guys. We can. We're going to get through this and stay healthy. You know, they keep talking on TV, wear a mask, social distance, do this, do that. Those are all such important things, but don't forget, eat healthy and move your body so that- And hydrate. And hydrate, because those three <laughs> things are also great for yeah. staying healthy. Yeah. So really proud of you guys for saying that you are going to, uh, you know, take care of yourself. Join Get Healthy UTV. If you want more information, email us, Let tell us, because we can help you and get you the deal. We love all of you members. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much for being with us. Yes. We have lots of fun stuff coming. We do. All right. Take care.